Nick Boak from Martin Guitars. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour through our factory. People come from all over the world to see this. It's incredible to see the Martin guitar being handmade. Let's go. So the, the Martin Custom Shop started around 1979. For many years, it was uh, it was run as part of production, but more recently, in the last five or six years, we've isolated uh, craftspeople uh, into the custom shop specifically to work just on custom guitars. So he's uh, chiseling out the the notches in the lining for to accept the ends of the main structural top braces. So this is a, this is a fairly high-end mahogany custom. And over here, he's working on the bracing, hand shaping a hand shaping a neck, using a fork gauge to uh, set the the thickness of the neck at the, the first and tenth fret. So uh, after he's accomplished that, and then, and then he's going to start uh, shaping the contour of the neck using. Uh, using this gauge which gives him the shape of the neck at the first fret, the shape of the neck at the tenth fret, sorry, the shape of the heel cap that he's working on right here, the shape of the cove of the inside of the neck, and the shape, the side profile of the neck as well. So all of the shapes on one ingenious fixture. Uh, these, are, these are used throughout the industry at this point, but they were invented here at Martin. So this is a custom, looks like a Style 42 custom, one of the Eric Clapton's. 45. 45. And he's uh, hand fitting the uh, nut. Fits into a very carefully sized channel. So here's the, the nut blank out of the uh, genuine bone. So the trick with bracing is to uh, have them be thin enough so that they produce great tone, but, uh, but not so thin that they cause the imploding of a guitar. So we want to walk the borderline between strength and tone. So these uh, uh, are HD28V Vintage Series tops. They've been partially shaped uh, already. And now the, the final shaping is done entirely with the chisel. And Diane is quite good at this. After uh, 10 or 20,000 pops, you start getting the hang of it. So this is our custom shop pearl inlay area. And uh, this is a, a highly customized neck uh, going on a guitar that has a butterfly theme. The uh, artwork was done by Robert Getzel. And the inlay work was done by Aaron Van Wy, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, custom shop inlay artist. Here also you can see some of uh, the processes and techniques and, and custom pieces that Aaron has produced. In some cases we'll cut inlays out on a machine. These are little snowflake inlays. These are uh, customized copper inlays for the Avid Brothers. Custom guitars uh, go through much the same process as our regular production, and this is the uh, uh, most crucial part of the, the guitar, the uh, neck fit. So the necks are initially fit, uh, uh, the dovetail is shaved to drop the neck down into the body, and then after the neck is carefully fit, the heel cap is uh, glued into place so that it aligns perfectly with the back binder line. So here you can see the dovetail itself. The uh, shoulders of the dovetail need to be undercut, like so, so that it matches the, the curvature of the body. And then minute, minute amounts of uh, wood are shaved from the shoulders of the dovetail itself in order to only, not only drop the, the dovetail into the body, but also to steer it left or right, or to pitch it uh, backwards at the correct angle so that the, the correct bridge can be set. Is that the custom black guitar? Yeah, this is custom ordered a uh, black top. 
unusual to have just a black top with rosewood back inside. So these were started uh, originally for Johnny Cash, uh, the black finish. As a matter of fact, there's a great story about Mr. Martin. Uh, we got the order for a black guitar. Um, Mr. Martin said, absolutely not. We take a lot of pride in, in selecting perfect woods. And uh, they went ahead and made the uh, guitar anyway, uh, secretly in the back and sent it to Johnny Cash and CF saw it on television. Uh, I think he thought it was okay. He even has a, if you look closely, he has a, a fine shim of uh, brass there. And that's actually going to, that's taking up the thickness of the lacquer and accounting for the scraping of the bindings. It's going to happen later. That's a really, really fine detail uh, you wouldn't see on other types of instruments. I, I want to show you this. This is a, a Style 42 custom, a beautiful little guitar, but we've got weights uh, that have been applied. And what this does is puts the exact, exact amount of pressure on the neck to uh, simulate the string tension. So with these weights in place, the uh, truss rod can be adjusted so that the neck is flat. When the weights come off, the, the neck will actually get back bow a little bit until the strings are stretched tight and the neck flattens out. So this is our way of accounting for string tension. Another guitar company, which I will neglect to mention, copied the Martin Dreadnought design in the 1930s. Um, and word that we were going to sue them, they flipped their bridge upside down. Uh, you could figure out who that might be. But uh, uh, more recently, we've uh, uh, recaptured that design, which is our own. Uh, starting in 1916, we started making the Dreadnought guitar. And more recently, we've been making Dreadnoughts uh, in the custom shop out of some special woods like Madagascar Rosewood, which closely uh, replicates the look and, and tone of Brazilian, rose, Brazilian Rosewood, which is now controlled by the Sites Treaty. So this is a, a breathtakingly beautiful wood. A uh, lovely uh, sunburst top, traditional 12 fret body and slotted headstock. Doesn't get much better than that. And here we have another beautiful custom. This is more like an Eric Clapton. This is also Madagascar rosewood. Uh, beautiful black grain lines. A toned top, uh, this is called vintage toner, and a good amount of pearl. Uh, this is unusual because it has the headstock that you would normally see on a 12 fret neck, the slotted head on a 14 fret guitar. See what the story is. Every one of the custom guitars has its own set of instructions. And uh, uh, this is being made, I think, on speculation for, for our custom shop shows around the country. Okay, we're back with Larry Fanel in side bending, and, and uh, in order to soften up the wood fibers, uh, Larry's got a, uh, a cylinder of uh, pretty hot water there that, that uh, we, we soak the wood in uh, for a short amount of time just to, to be able to facilitate the extremely difficult bend uh, that the cutaway puts upon those wood fibers. So we don't want the, the fibers to uh, break uh, the water really helps to create steam and facilitate the bend. So he, here he's uh, checking with the ruler to make sure that the, uh, that the wood hasn't warped at all. Sometimes when wood is bent, uh, if the grain is uh, a little uh, crisscrossed, it'll create a, a, a little recession or dip in the wood. So this is Spanish cedar has a fantastic aroma. It gives the inside of the guitar its uh, 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 aroma. It's difficult to make this part. It, it's called kerfing. The kerfing almost goes almost all the way through the cedar, enabling it to take on the shape of the guitar. Obviously what's going on here is uh, this uh, uh, age-old process of gluing the ribbon in using this high technology of closed pins. What the ribbon does is gives us an extra gluing surface for the top and back. 
The sides are simply too thin to glue anything to. For our mortise and tendon guitars, we use a little maple ide identification plate, which is, is affixed to the uh, front block inside the body. So these are our little serial number plates that have been laser etched. And you can see that process going on right here. Basically, a laser printer, uh, literally. <laughs> So this is the hand fitting of the, the top and the back and the actual glue up. He's just glued the, the top and now is working on the back. So a thin bead of, uh, of glue around the perimeter of the guitar and notice the, the notches that have been made to accept the ends of the main structural braces. This ties the tone and, and strength and integrity of the guitar all together. Of course, on Authentic Series and some custom guitars, we use animal hide glue, but that's quite a complicated process where every part needs to be kept hot because the glue sets so quickly. This is the more traditional uh, aliphatic resin or yellow woodworking glue. I think one of the most interesting things about Martin guitars is the, is the fact that the, the back is actually a spring. It's, uh, it's arched in two directions. You can see that he's having to uh, uh, actually press it down at both ends, uh, at the front block and the rear block. And it's also arched laterally so that the tone is reflective out the sound hole. So here's one coming out of out of the uh, press. The press is a heated air bladder press which exerts extremely light pressure on the top and the back. Uh, we don't want to crack the instrument with heavy clamping at this point, so pretty high technology. So uh, <clears throat> we're in the phrasing area. We're not sure where the wood phrasing comes from. It's a, a German word, but it, we use it to refer to the uh, a fine cut along the edge of the guitar, uh, phrasing or removing wood to allow for the binding and inlay of each guitar. So this, uh, these are the special cutters, uh, beautiful little carbide cutters and very, very precise collars for every possible size of uh, cut that you'd want to make. So after those cuts are made on, on a lateral router, then the guitar can come over for, for binding. Because there's some non-right angles, it's, it's critical to go in with hand files. And this little tool is called a riffler. This is used <laughs> to uh, get into uh, uh, inside curves, a pretty neat little tool. So he's just going over every dimension to make sure it fits before he glues it up. Many guitar companies take a huge big chunk out of the edge of the guitar and, and use the binding and inlays all as one large block. We prefer to, to remove much less wood and apply a thin outer binding with very, very thin inlay pieces and not remove uh, uh, so much wood from the edge of the guitar. So the cement here is kind of like a, a model cement or like a Duco or testers model cement uh, to glue the, the bindings on. The masking tape will hold it in, uh, in place while the glue dries. So surprisingly, the ukuleles require almost as much work, if not even a little more than the guitars. This is a, a little number three ukulele, beautiful little inlay coming down the center of the board. Same little dovetail joint, everything in miniature, which makes it actually more difficult. So we already saw the fitting of the neck in the custom shop and the, and the same thing happens in production. The dovetail fit to the body and then the heel cap applied. So there's no more interchangeability at all after this point. Every uh, neck is hand fit to every body. She's applying uh, glue into the center of each fret, fret slot and, t and then tapping the fret into place prior to pressing. The pressing of the frets is done on a special 
automated arbor press, which uh, ensures that every fret is seated perfectly. Here you can see the frets being uh, tapped into place prior to the arbor press. The glue is used because as the wood shrinks up a little bit, the tendency is to want to make the, uh, the fret pop up in the middle. So just a little bit of glue in the middle of the fret prevents that from happening. Now the bodies are bound and ready for sanding and, and finished preparation. But we've been made quite an investment in uh, these uh, uh, special uh, vacuum dust removers to uh, keep this area perfectly clean, especially given that we want a perfectly clean area uh, in the lacquering so that no dust particles get into the finish. This is a beautiful custom guitar with wooden bindings and power shell inlay. Because rosewood and mahogany is quite porous, we need to apply a wood filler, which is brushed on much like a, a brown paint, allowed to set a little bit and then forced into the grain using a buffing bonnet. In the process, the, the beautiful white bindings become dirty and they need to be hand scraped or cleaned in order to get them ready for lacquering. It takes about two to three weeks for a guitar to go through lacquering. Uh, we apply a couple of coats and then do a sanding, a couple more coats and another sanding. Uh, we repeat that until we have a perfect finish and then we proceed to polish it. The same filling process occurs with the neck and after the neck is filled, the uh, uh, precise holes for the tuning machines are drilled and it can proceed into getting coats of lacquer. So if you can catch this in the reflection, this has gone through several coats. You can still see in the reflection here the presence of the pores. So the deal here is that, that uh, the guitars will come here and get sanded. Um, see if there's one that's... This is what they look like here after they've been sanded. So successive coats of lacquer until uh, we achieve this this, you can see this is almost completely filled and ready for polishing. We have a lot of different finishing uh, packages, uh, natural finish without any toner at all. Here you can see the M38 toner, which is uh, uh, kind of a, a simulation of how lacquer turns golden over time. And we have several shades in between. So this is a, re this is a repair department. We get uh, hundreds if not thousands of instruments in over the course of a year. We've been making guitars for uh, almost 180 years and they get, uh, they get hurt. Uh, sometimes they're abused. Uh, we call this a marital dispute here. Uh, but it's possible uh, to fix anything. This is a, probably the worst example of a bad repair job that we've ever seen. Uh, People often will drop the guitar and, and uh, break the neck. Uh, instruments come, in, come here to be put back to uh, perfect condition. We get instruments that are quite valuable. This is a Brazilian Rosewood D28, uh, probably from the, the 50s or early 60s. Instruments made with the older wood are quite valuable. Probably. So we're always looking for uh, technology that will assist us the problem with polishing is that each polisher would exert uh, different amounts of pressure upon the guitar. And if you apply too much pressure with the polisher, you burn right through the lacquer and require that the guitar be completely refinished, which is expensive and time consuming. Uh, this unusual tool, uh, which is actually a combination of two robots, we were a little skeptical thinking that people would, would uh, not appreciate uh, this because of the handmade reputation of Martin Guitars, but in fact this has become the most popular part of the tour. So there's a rough wheel and then a fine wheel, and it's really neat to see it put it down. It's going to put the, the instrument down in a moment. So lacquer forms what we call peanut shell or orange peel, and uh, that's what we need to remove. We still have a lot of hand polishing to do after this, but uh, this does the bulk of the, the rough polish. How you doing? 
So this is one of the hand polishing stations. And uh, Rich is uh, one of our best polishers. And so he's going over, going over the finish and, and doing it using lamb's wool buffing bonnets with special pumice or compounds to, to get a perfect high gloss finish. So this is the pearl inlay department. And what they're doing here is not only excavating the area where the pearl is going to go, but also in laying the uh, polyvinyl or Teflon pieces that are peeled out, leaving perfectly sized channels for the pearl inlay to be inset. And this is uh, several days of work. Uh, this is a D45. You can see the area where the pearl is going to go here. It still has the poly. And here the strips uh, have been removed and the pearl already inlaid. Around the the end piece, uh, these uh, areas are carefully mitered. Uh, also, mitering is done near the neck joint. So it's a beautiful art. We still do a good bit of hand cutting. Um, here you can see the jeweler's saw that's used for hand cutting. A couple of little maple leaf inlays, I think for a Canadian customer. And uh, someone's signature, that's Rob Yoder. Uh, we also have Alice, I don't know if that's Arla Guthrie. Um, but you can see the, the, the shell, what it looks like, and, and the tools, and the results of some very intricate cutting. Now that the necks and bodies are out of lacquering, they come here where they're carefully cleaned up. She's actually working on one of the John Mayer signature models. You can see John's signature at the end of the fingerboard. After the neck is cleaned up, it is ready for hand fitting to the body and glue up. Hello. Hi. Oh, how are you? Pretty good. Good. So this is the, the final neck fit, the, the area where the, the neck fit has to be carefully checked uh, for a perfect fit before, before gluing up. There's no, no turning back at this point. We want a perfect seam. And uh, like I said, the neck fit is critical to the playability of the instrument. So after, after this is done and the glue is applied, uh, the clamping is done, neck is uh, glued in permanently, and it's ready for a bridge. Now that the neck is in place, we can locate the bridge. And because we need to glue wood to wood, we need to skim lacquer away from the bridge area and prepare this surface for the glue up. In the meantime, the tuning machines are on the neck. Uh, these are the vintage tuning machines uh, made by Waverly. And uh, they're installed uh, basically ready for a bridge. A beautiful D45B vintage model, or is this custom? It's a D45B. D45B, I was right the first time. So um, uh, getting strung and tuned. He's got a little protective uh, piece on the headstock to prevent any any uh, strings from marring the finish. Uh, basically, when the guitars are, are all done like this, they're strung, tuned, given their pick guard, uh, the action is set. But because of all the tension pulling on the guitar, we're going to set it back into the warehouse for several days to allow the guitar to settle in. Uh, the action will usually come up a little bit, after which we'll bring it back out of the warehouse, readjust it, readjust the truss rod and the saddle and get it ready for shipping to uh, dealers and distributors around the world. All the, all the people in this department are guitar players. We need guitar players more than uh, most companies. So we keep all of our musicians back here and musician wannabes. And uh, uh, they're the ones that are testing the instruments uh, to make sure they're perfectly playable.